Now that we learned how to use sensors in Arduino with MaxMSP or Pure Data, we can start thinking about designing our own instrument. But where do we even begin? Here are some things that may help and inspire us when coming up with ideas. Experimenting with sensors is a great starting point. After purchasing sensors from Amazon, SparkFun, or Adafruit, we can explore different ways in which we can interact with them musically. One of my favorite music controller is The Light Thing by Leaf Cutter John. It's a simple yet versatile and expressive instrument, and it's pretty much just rows of photoresistor, which is a sensor that can measure the amount of light. The beauty of this instrument comes from the dynamic gesture and the light source. Bike light can be used for rhythmic pulse, and the performer can move it around to modulate the rhythmic synth sound. Here are some sensors that we can buy for experimenting. Accelerometer, photoresistor, ribbon sensor, FSR sensor, flex sensor, and etc. Everyday objects and gestures can suggest new controllers. Here's an instrument called Soft Revolvers. It's clearly inspired by spinning tops, and it sounds like the rotational speed is mapped to an audio playback speed. So, as we go on with our daily lives, we can pay closer attention to our everyday gestures and objects, and think about how we can map musical parameters to them in a compelling way. And if it seems interesting enough, we can start doing proof of concepts, which I'll discuss about later in this video. Existing instruments suggest new controllers. Copying an instrument is dumb, leveraging expert technique is smart. So try to think of your favorite acoustic instrument or even the one that you know how to play. Whether it's a guitar or saxophone, try to think of what makes that instrument fun and expressive to play. Rather than making a direct electronic version of that instrument, let the specific characteristics as well as technique and gesture influence the design. Here are some general tips to consider. Have a good reason for incorporating LEDs to your design. More functionality does not mean better. Having 20 different sensors on your instrument is just gonna be confusing. Don't be too ambitious, especially for your first instrument. Besides, most great digital musical instruments are nice and simple. Try to get the most out of one or two types of sensors. For example, Leaf Cutter John can move their arm around in three directions, X, Y, and Z axis at once. And only one type of sensor is utilized. By using both arms, there are a lot of musical controls even though the instrument design itself is nice and simple. Big gesture, big sound. Small gesture, small sound. So have a good design that allows you to perform dynamically. Low floor, high ceiling. Make your instrument accessible so that you can start making music with it very soon after you pick it up, but allow the design to let you master it. Piano is a great example of this. Anyone can quickly learn simple songs, but it takes years to perform difficult classical piece or improvise an exciting jazz solo. Violin, in my opinion, is an example of high floor and high ceiling. Our day one or even the first year of playing the violin will be unlistenable. We'll be out of pitch because it's fretless, and it's difficult to make good sounds when bowing as a beginner. Never forget that we are building a musical instrument. Keep the following thoughts in mind as you design. Will I be able to perform a 10 to 15 minute live set with it and keep the music engaging for myself and the audience? Will the audience be able to see and understand what I'm doing with the instrument on stage? And will I be able to make an entire album or EP with it? So think of simple design that will allow you to make music versatile. So hopefully these suggestions can be a good starting point for you. After getting some ideas going, I highly recommend that you talk to your friend for feedback. Also, my friend Cami started a Reddit page for digital instrument design that I'll be involved in as well. So maybe we can have posts for feedback session. And we'll try to post instruments that could be a great reference for everyone. After coming up with an idea, what's next? Proof of concept is an important step in the process of designing our very own instrument. We need to test if it's technically possible to create the instrument. For example, proof of concept for this instrument is building something that can spin and have its speed measured using a sensor. 
Then I had to program in Arduino and Max to map the speed to a synth volume. Once we successfully have the proof of concept working, then we need to play around and improvise in order to test if it's compelling enough idea in practice. It's crucial that this process is quick, short, and cheap. Don't spend too much time or money. Also, try not to marry an idea. Always be open and try out many different ideas. As for the prototype, which I can discuss more in future video, try to build it as quickly and simply as possible. Don't worry too much about the materials. I recommend for most people to build a prototype out of foam core, aka foam board. There are tons of tutorials on YouTube, and I'm actually thinking about making a foam core tutorial specifically for instrument builders, so stay tuned for that. I highly recommend that you spend hours or days playing with the prototype and figuring out what you can improve before building your first iteration of the instrument. If it's durable enough, I even recommend that you play a local performance, especially a DIY experimental music show with your prototype, or have an improv session with your friends. I hope this video will be helpful in coming up with instrument design ideas. Please remember to stay patient and be open to your surroundings, and an idea will surely arrive to you. Good luck and have fun! Next week's video will be about sending data from Max or Pure Data to Arduino. I'll see you next Sunday. Bye.